Hi everyone, in this video we will go through antilogarithms. We will figure out how to find antilog using logarithmic tables. What is an antilogarithm? It is nothing but the reverse of logarithm. If I say log of x is 1.2456, then I want to find the value of x. To find this value of x, I will have to take antilog. So you can assume that when log comes this side, it becomes antilog. So x becomes antilog of this one. So in the earlier example we saw, let's take the example. Here, log of this much, log of 0 0.00063 is this much. Given this value, you want to find this value. How will you do that? That is nothing but antilog. If you have the log value, if you want to find this number, then it is then you will have to use antilog. Right? So now if I give this number and ask you to find antilog, you should get this particular number back using the same logarithmic table. So, if I say log x is this value, then x, how do I find the value of x? Using antilog of this particular number. Antilog also is found from the logarithmic table itself, but we need to look for antilog section. Then find the value, same way we did in logarithm. It's the same way, same procedure, same steps, but you will have to use antilog section. How do we find the characteristic and mantissa that we will discuss? Mantissa again, we will find using log table. We will have to figure out how to find characteristic. Let's take this example. You want to find anti-log of 1.2456. 1.2456. Whatever value you get from here, from the table. For example, you got this value from this table, 1760. I am going to use the same number, same number 1760. I put one decimal point after first digit. Mandatorily, you put one decimal point like this. After first digit, put a decimal point. Then, multiply with 10 to the power something. That something is nothing but the number before the decimal point. Say in this example, the number before the decimal point is 1. So, 1 would have to be the power for 10. So, when you multiply 1.760 into 10 to the power 1, you will get 17.60. So, this is the way we find characteristic. Now, how do we find the mantissa? In anti-log, we should not consider this part. We should always consider only the fraction part. Only the fraction part we should consider. So, we have 2, 4, 5, 6. 2, 4, 5, 6. Same way. Take the first two digits. 2, 4. Look for the column 2, 4. Remember one thing. Anti-log will always start with 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. Right? It will always be a decimal antilog. That is why that is why you will always have to look at only the decimal part. Only the decimal part needs to be looked. So you will have to see 2, 4, 5, 6. 2, 4 is the first column. So look for 0.24. So you have 0.24 here. Now third digit is 5. So look for column number 5. From 0.24 you come till column number 5. You will see a number which is 1758. You are seeing this number 1758. Right? Now, what is the fourth digit? Fourth digit is 6. Now, you come to the mean difference section. You look for fourth digit, which is 6. Now, you come, you keep proceeding from this particular number till this column 6. And here, you see the number 2. Now, you add 1758 plus 2. The way we did for logarithms, here also we will have to add these two values. When we add, we will get 1760. That's how we have got 1760 here. Now we will find the characteristic. When we are finding log values, we used to find characteristic before, before we found the mantissa. But here we will have to first figure out the anti-log value from the log table and then find out where we should put decimal point. Here main thing is whatever value you get from logarithmic table, we will have to find where to put the decimal point. To put the decimal point, always Put the decimal point after first digit and then multiply with 10 to the power something. 10 to the power something. That something is nothing but depends on the number that is given here. Here it is 1. So you make it as 10 to the power 1. Let's take another example. Say we will have to find antilog of this one. Right. This is nothing but minus 2. Right. This is minus 2 and 2, 4, 5, 6. Now again we will only consider this. We will not consider this. We will only consider this decimal part to find the log value. So, 2, 4, 5, 6 will give same value, 1760. 2, 4, 5, 6 will give 1760. Now, we have 1760 from log table. 
now where do we put the decimal point is the question so always the moment we get the log value you have 1760 put decimal point in the first place after first digit put decimal point of the first digit then multiply with 10 to the power something what is this something that we'll have to figure out from this number before decimal point what do we have 2 and we have minus 2 so you'll have to put you'll have to put as 10 to the power minus 2 so you have minus 2 here so you'll get minus 2 here this is nothing but 1.70 760 into 10 to the power minus 2 is nothing but 1 by 100 and 1 by 100 is 0.01 when you multiply 0.01 with 1.760 you will get 0.01760 now instead of doing this multiplication the trick is just left shift left shift left shift this decimal place decimal point by two places why two places you have two here as the power so by two places you shift so now this is one and this is second so you have to shift after the second place right so assume that there is zero here and now put a decimal point now you see the decimal point was here you shifted by two places you left shifted why left shift because this is minus when there is minus you have to left shift when there is minus left shift so you shifted by two places one two and then you put a decimal point because it's two here we had 1760 we put decimal point after first digit then multiplied with 10 to the power something and that something is nothing but this one this this number which is minus 2 so we'll put minus 2 here you can directly multiply or you left shift so we left shift by two places because you have two here you shift it by two places this is one place this is second place zero like this so 0.0170 0.01760 This is the anti-log. Now let's take another example. Using logarithmic tables, find the anti-log. Anti-log of one point five six three, right? Ignore this number before the decimal point. You only have to consider the decimal part. In the decimal part, we have five six three five six three. So look look for point five six in anti-log. Point five six, point five six, and then third digit is three. Come to third column. now from from 0.56 you keep on going till till the part where you meet up with third column so you get 3656 3656 so you stop it here because there is no fourth digit so 3656 you get now the question is where to put the decimal point what is the first step put a decimal point after the first digit so we have 3656 put the decimal point after the first digit okay now you multiply with 10 to the power something what is this something this something is nothing but this number here what do we have we have 1 here so it should be 1 10 to the power 1 10 to the power 1 is nothing but 10 right 10 to the power 1 is 10 so what is 10 into 3.656 right shift now right shift so it will be you have 10 so right shift by one place so it will be 36.56 you are shifting here right shift so 36.56 or you can simply multiply 3.656 into 10 is 36.56 so this is the anti log let's take another example here we have 0.643 0 we have right now as usual let's find the anti log let's take only the fractional part which is 643 so we'll take 0.64 in the first column go to the column where 3 is there right just move move till this particular column you'll see 4395 4395 we don't have fourth digit so we stop it here 4395 now where to put the decimal point first digit put the decimal point after the first digit into 10 to the power something now what is this something something is zero simple so it will be Into ten to the power zero. What is ten to the power zero? It's one. Ten to the power zero. Anything to the power zero is one. So it's going to be four point three nine five itself. So this is the anti log. Let's take another example. Now here you have minus three, right? 
you have a negative value here so let's first find the anti log using the logarithmic table for this fractional part only so we have 0.673 so look for 0.67 look for third column you will get 4710 4710 from 0.67 you come till third column this one third column you will get 4710 4710 now what is the next step put a decimal point after first digit multiply with 10 to the power what it's minus 3 here so it will be 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 3 is nothing but actually 1 by 1000 okay you can use a calculator and multiply it like this or left shift left shift it's 3 here so left shift by 3 places 3 places so so it will be like this 3 places 1 2 3 0 0 0 here right so decimal point should be here 0.0047 0.0047 so if you notice we had 3 here so your non zero number your non zero number should be in the third place simple this is 3 here so non zero number should be in the third place non zero number is 4 it should be in the third place after decimal point now let's take another example 0.078 we'll just take the fractional part which is 078 now we'll look for first two digits first two digit is 07 please don't ignore the zero here don't don't leave out the zero and take 78 don't take 0.78 it will be wrong you will have to take 0.07 itself right look for 0.07 right and then look for eighth column this is eighth column so from 0.07 you keep going till the eighth column we have 1197 1197 that's all right now where do we put the decimal point after first digit we put the decimal point multiply with 10 to the power what zero here so it's zero 10 to the power 0 10 to the power 0 is 1 so it's going to be 1.197 itself this is the anti log value 1.197 with this we have come to the end of this particular topic if you have found this video useful do press a like and share it Thank you.